the common day people are going to be the change makers. It's not going to be celebrities. It's not going to be the government. It's going to be you and me and everybody who's listening to this. The common day people are going to shift this world. And that's my prediction for you. Nowadays, you see that. You see these YouTube videos about common day people who are saving lives because that's who's going to be the change makers, not some big celebrity with a big name. And the second thing that's very important to the listeners who are listening to you is expectations. And I'm there with you. I understand. I have expectations of what my life should be, who I should be, what others should be. And I don't see it the way that I want. And it shows up different. All this can't be real. It can't be true. Because we set such expectations on ourselves, especially on others and our world. And listen, I see these really amazing, epic things. Do I live a normal mom life that I have all this stuff happening to me? People think, oh my God, my, there can't be miracles. It can't be all these amazing things. What you're saying is not real, right? But listen, I'm a real mom dealing with real life issues, with my little toddler with meltdowns and all this other stuff, where, where car breaks down, because we're living in a world where you have to experience all of life. Wondering, has anybody ever done an experiment where they see somebody they love, somebody they hate, let's say, somebody that they're scared of, there's all these emotions, they actually look at them and actually have a device on them. And I don't mean a heart monitor, actual energetic device to actually see the energy and where it actually is amplified. I wonder if they've ever done, done that. They've done that on brain scans, but what about the body? Because when you love somebody, where is that coming from? Is that coming from the heart? That emotion is coming from the heart. They've never done that, have they? The Heart Math Institute in the States has done a lot of work on the heart. There's a thing called broken heart syndrome, and the heart has certain striations that split when you have a broken heart. I was talking to a scientist about that, and it doesn't live too far away from that institute in the U.S., and we're collaborating. We see the body and not the brain, and actually see electron, like with the infrared lights and the electromagnetic in real time, in colors. When I channel, I gave you messages about your father. I honestly forgot what I said. My mind goes blank. Nothing is happening in my mind, but I'm here. And when I said that reading to you, and then afterwards you told me how it was super emotional, it was on point. So the thing is, we as mediums, we go into the state of we're here, but our mind goes blank in a sense of a meditative state, but automatically. When we get a message and I hear somebody or I feel somebody, actually literally they touch me, I just automatically go into that state. When you were saying about that softness, I go into that state and all the information, I'm open and I let it just come in. I just say what I hear and there's no filter. I, I don't know this information. I don't even remember what I said to you, honestly, other than after we spoke, you mentioned some things. It was very emotional. Mm. Every single human being has the capability of doing this. I'm collaborating with scientists because I want people to understand how they could do it. We're evolving. And the time is now to work together in collaboration of, hey, I could do this. I'm not a weirdo. You're a weirdo, too. <laughs> we're all we, weird. We're all weirdos. you all weird. <laughs> if you take the E out weird, we're wired. To what? <laughs> exactly. But are we connected? Um, yeah. This is so fascinating you're doing this. I, I, I salute what you're doing and the fact that you've got somebody in the U.S., especially entities like the Heart Math Institute. That, that's been the case where uh, the collaboration I have is from the U.S. It's just the evolutionary stage. There's certain regions in the world, but even though, think about it, actually England is the heart chakra of the world. When I had this strange scenario happen to me, I think I mentioned to you where I, had, I heard the frequency with, with the Mayan prophesized the end of the world. That day, I wasn't expecting anything at all. I heard a frequency in my ear so loud. And suddenly after six months, I started to see this actual reality. How, how it looks ever since that time i saw a green orb and the scientist when we had this discussion i just told him my experience and he actually explained in scientific and spiritual sense of what i mean he was referencing textbooks and scientific work he was saying that the uh, green chakra is the vibration that we're rising to he gave the scientific reasoning as well. The spiritual version is that we're raising into the a green frequency, which is the fifth dimension. He said the reason why you might have seen a green orb is because we're ready to ascend to the higher vibration, which now at the moment is green. When you look at winter, you think well, there's nothing growing. But then come the spring, you get a lot of green coming through. It's propositional firing where nature starts to happen in green. Green is nuclear. I don't mean in terms of weapons nuclear in terms of energy it's got thrust if you're walking on the pavement through those little cracks 
you see shoots pushing their way through. That's propositional firing of green coming through. Green has ignition. And when you mentioned we're ascending into green, moving into that strata, I see there's two templates, green, yellow, blue, red, and white. There's also red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. That sevenfold spectrum is our planetary government of form. If you jump off the Eiffel Tower, the planetary government doesn't allow you to do that in as much as it doesn't allow you to go 600 feet below the ocean without special equipment because it's not within the permission for you to do that. I see that as one framework or template. If you look at England as an example, post boxes are red. The old telephone booths are red. You get a red letter. The blood, which is arterial, is red. The thing is, the colors, there's different chakras in the world, and each of them symbolize different energies. And let's say England has the green chakra. They even say, like, Jesus walked these lands and all these other things. Very spiritual, very loving in the core of it. And it's like the cycles. You look at England, even though we say love and all this stuff, they, they look at it going, we're not that love we used to be or whatever we were or not, because it all comes in cycles. Each of the cycles and each of the colors have a cycle, like a spectrum. If you go from the darkest to the lightest of each color, that's what it is. Each color has the dark and the light, and you have to have it. There's the angels and the devils, the white and the dark, the good and the bad. But you need your devil to see the angel. Everybody has their devil. Everybody has their angel. And everybody put this blame on it going, oh, I can't talk about my darker sides, my devils. Everybody has them. But it's overcoming the darker shadows of ourselves to get to the light. Because at core, we are light. But we are signed up here in this incarnation to experience it all. And I think I mentioned to you before, we didn't come here for paradise is when we cross over <laughs> you wanted to experience it all the good and the bad in between you really did and some people go like oh my god i don't want to thing is you really did sign up here for your own soul evolution that people in this conscious state don't understand why would i ever do that to myself i to mention that to you about the spectrums of different colors and different shades of that too color is a cloak of force everything is a derivative of red orange yellow green blue and go violet if you wanted to buy a red, sexy dress, your brain will get on the frequency of red. You'll go into a store, and even if it's not a dress, you'll see red everywhere because you've got on the frequency of it. Can you see it? No, you can't see it, but you've got on that frequency. So you go into the store, and you go into the filtrations, the gatekeeper, the filtration system. No, not that one, this one. And you start choosing. We get on the frequency of color, and color is used for many things. We're so unaware of it. It's black is the absence of color. White is the presence of color. There's a reason for the presence of color in our lives. What is the significance of color? What does it lead to? What does it connect to? How do we address what it means? It's one that I've researched because the thing is that my background is design. Uh, I have a degree in design. Wow. <laughs> so speaking of colors, uh, I used to be a fashion designer slash costume designer. I took a, a class called Theory of Color. And each color, we went all through history explaining all the colors. Uh like you said, it is symbolized with certain things. I give an example, like royal blue, that deep blue is symbolic of royalty and richness. Red is caution or power, stop or very bold, passion, sexy. That's why they actually do color therapy. There's some people who do color therapy as well. And let's say you have somebody who's maybe autistic or different syndromes, they react to certain colors in different ways. So you wouldn't want to show them certain colors like red. You go to Spain, they do not like the color red or hot pink. <laughs> Where my encounter is actually I was wearing hot pink and really agitated the bull. It was at the farmlands in my property in Poland. Even animals react to. It's not just humans. Yeah. So if you think about animals in nature have a reaction to certain colors, the bodies they have in the colors to enhance or to camouflage. There's so many animals are able to camouflage. So in a sense, it's like the colors are so important to our lives. It's not only enhancing our lives, but it's making us not aligned to our true essence, right? I grew up in New York. And black is a trademark. Everybody wears black there, okay? That's a standard. And I never questioned it because it's part of the norm. You don't question a norm. You go along with the crowd mm. <laughs> until you get out of the crowd. When you get out, you realize there's a reason they want everybody to wear black, almost like a communistic mentality. Back in the day, color symbolized you and your origin. Black wasn't so popular unless it became religious. That's a different thing, right? Religious 
Black mm. became more religious, like the nuns and the popes. They put that onto the people. <laughs> it wasn't like that. Oh. Actually, black was not a natural color. It's a dye. Anything that black has to be dyed because an origin is either white or like a beige or, or a yellowish yeah. color, right? That's the natural form. We live in this world that is dominated by material things. That's where our physical lives unfold. But we can't let ourselves become completely wrapped up in it. Because if we only focus on the material, we miss out on the deeper spiritual aspects of life that bring balance, that bring fulfillment. It's opening ourselves to these truths and breaking free from the ignorance that keep our souls locked up. When we do this we rise above the challenges that life throws at us and become masters of our circumstances. We can start to shape circumstances. When you look at the theory of color and the unseen realms of it, you're not just looking at the material aspects of it. That's the resultant of it. You're not stepping into the cause worlds. As our spirits grow, we naturally become more compassionate more attuned to the wonder and the beauty of life. The spiritual growth is what helps us live fully in the present while preparing us for higher existence beyond this life. I see so many people struggle with life's challenges because they haven't fully opened their hearts to the spiritual beauty that's shining down on us. It's always close by. This beauty is full of love, justice, freedom, and elements that can lift us out of the traps that we often set for ourselves. Too often people complain about how hard life is, but when you dismiss those spiritual truths, you miss what can help you. It's like being unhappy with the bed you've made, even though you're the one who made it. There's a reason why I came across it. This is what I was told. The common day people are going to be the change makers. It's not going to be celebrities. It's not going to be the government. It's going to be you and me and everybody who's listening to this. The common day people are going to shift this world. And that's my prediction for you. Nowadays, you see that. You see these YouTube videos about common day people who are saving lives because that's who's going to be the change makers, not some big celebrity with a big name. And the second thing that's very important to listeners who are listening to you is expectations. And I'm there with you. I understand. I have my expectations of what my life should be, who I should be, what others should be, and I don't see it the way that I want. And it shows up different. All this can't be real. It can't be true because we set such expectations on ourselves, especially on others and our world. And listen, I see these really amazing, epic things. Do I live a normal mom life that I have all this stuff happening to me? I do. <laughs> like people think, oh my God, my there can't be miracles. There can't be all these amazing things. What you're saying is not real, right? And listen, I'm a real mom dealing with real life issues with my little toddler with meltdowns and all this other stuff where, where car breaks down because we're living in a world where you have to experience all of life. When we have these expectations that we go, I can't believe in miracles. Angels, maybe not unless we experience it for ourselves. Like your auntie experience you had to go, wait a minute. I saw, I believe. And those who don't see, they start, maybe believe a little less because they have to bring it to reality. When they think of Jesus, let's say, and I'm not religious, they think of Jesus like untouchable. He was the holiest of holies. He never could have said anything wrong. He never cursed. <laughs> no, he was a real human being with just like supernatural gifts. Do you understand? Like me, like you, like everybody else. He just was so strong in his, in his beliefs and he walked his path. He was a real dude <laughs> living his life, eating his food, going to the toilet. <laughs> and people really put him on his pedestal because he walked his path of greatness to become the person he is. Everybody could do that. I just wanted to say that. I don't know. There's important to say that to maybe your audience or something. Where 99% of life is maintenance. You got to take a poop, you got to eat, you got to make your bed, you got to do all these things. Whether you're spiritual or not, you still have to do all those maintenance things. Even if you are spiritual, and I, I believe everybody is, has a spiritual quotient of some kind, whatever it is for them, you've still got to do all these maintenance things. You're not in our land with the fairies. The sun radiates warmth and love. It reaches out to anyone who's open to it. Even in our darkest moments, 
the light is there. We have to go into the dark to light it up, to bring that light out. That light is there offering infinite compassion and justice to anyone ready to embrace it. It guides us to a place where our souls can be truly refreshed. Spiritual growth isn't about detaching from life. It's about harmonizing our physical, mental, and spiritual selves to create a sense of joy and fulfillment that nothing else can provide. When I think or I talk about divine or higher laws, I don't feel small or insignificant in the face of it. We're part of something infinite. I'm a replay of the core of God and creation. It feels its way through the expression I can have. I'm here to learn, to relearn, to unlearn, to grow, to absorb the wisdom that flows throughout all of life and use it to bring more truth and love into the world. If you can get an optimal grip on this, you can face life with a smile instead of a frown with a song in your heart instead of a sigh. You can walk confidently into the world knowing that you are connected to something much larger than you. These spiritual principles are not just for special moments. I can give a good spiritual talk, but I have to live it. I have to live it every day in everything that I do, whether it's at work or at home or facing life's biggest challenges, the light of spiritual truth can guide us through that beauty of developing our spiritual nature, because that connects us to something limitless. Our material lives are finite. We're going to be returning to the elements from which they came. My feeling is my spiritual life is infinite. The more I can learn and align and live by spiritual truths, the more I realize this source is inexhaustible. There's always more wisdom. There's always more love. There's always more light to draw upon. This rising realization offers me a glimpse of that infinite power that lies beyond my understanding. We have everything we need to develop our best qualities and live fully. But without this connection, life becomes small and limited and cold and selfish. It lacks that golden thread of love that binds humanity together. Because for me, without love, and I'm not talking about sexual love or intimate love, it's a different kind of love. Without that, it, for me, life loses its meaning. Even if people who are listening to this ignore these truths, they remain constant in the end. In the end, it's the spiritual life that will prevail. The darkness we experience isn't created by a higher power. It's a result of our own actions. One of the main things I hear people say when I discuss to about them, they think they're so far away from God. They think God is out there somewhere. He can't be within me. No, really. They think like Jesus, he's on the pedestal. God is so far. And the thing is, God is really within. God made you and made me, made every single thing in this universe. When you recognize that, let's say I have an issue and you really want to talk to somebody and you maybe you can't, you literally can actually ask God at any moment and they can laugh all they want because you're always connected to that thread of life. Believe me, because I speak to the source and all the energies and that's how i get the messages because we're all connected it's not outside of you it's not oh god and where is he in all this creation and and i want to say religion restricts us from this belief of that especially i'm sorry certain religions and i'm spiritual i love god i love jesus and all the buddhas you name it i love all of them anyone that have a good loving nature to them but Certain religions gave us traditions that are not aligned with us. We have to filter through this now. Is this serving me saying I was born a sinner? Is that serving me? I was not born a sinner or all these other things. There's no reason you should go to church and say, I'm so sorry for my sins my whole entire life and I will always be sinned. That's the religion I was brought up in. I'm not going to name it if you know what I'm talking about. From birth, you're sinned all the way to death. How can that be? I was born in the light of God. So you're not far away from God and his programming. As a hypnotherapist, the programming of our lives we are programmed to believe certain things all the way from birth into our adult life and when we transition we have to filter through 
is it serving us? I grew up in a very conservative family, super conservative, very religious. So I had my struggles and I fought through it. They made me go to church every Sunday. I made up that I was sick one day, another one, whatever. I just walked out. Other ones I kept laughing inside. I had to leave because I was like, this, what are you talking about? I didn't say that out loud, but me and my mom were looking at each other laughing and I had to leave and she had to leave <laughs> in church. The thing is, we're programmed. You have to think about it for a second. Like when you think, of, wait a minute, are you praying and saying, I'm a sinner? I walked out. Another religion where they really do horrible things like mutilations, is that serving us? At core, our religions are beautiful, but they were changed. They were actually changed over time. They're not the truth they started out from. Before somebody in history changed them, let's backtrack and go, that's not serving me. It's programming to believe negative, disruptive things. Let me just delete Jesus. I believe in him. Am I Catholic? No. <laughs> do I believe in Jesus and Mary? I do. But I don't believe in the tradition. So I filter through what is serving me and what is not. My dad is super religious, but I love my dad. And we had all these discussions about it. He's like, what are you? I'm like, I'm everything. <laughs> like, you can't be everything. I'm like, why not? <laughs> like, so funny, especially when you talk to people who are super religious, right? So I just wanted to say that you have to realize when I'm a hypnotherapist and I have uh, clients who ask me different things. They're not going to ask me, get rid of my religion. They just say, hey, relationships are not working out. I want more money. I have cravings for these foods and help me out. When we get to the core of the issue, do you know what it gets to? It gets to the core of how they grew up. That's where it all stems from, what they grew up believing. And now we filter through and ask them, what do you want in your life? What makes you happy? How do you want your life to look? I had a client yesterday and she always a repeat client because I always do the things for her, all different kinds. She always comes back and I haven't seen her in at least 10 months. She followed up and everything that I had given her and my hypnosis came to fruition, like the outcome was a good result. And now her relationships are amazing. Her job is fantastic. She feels amazing about herself. But now it's the food category. <laughs> she came back to me going, Joanna, I'm doing this. I'm overeating. How can I fix that? And we have scheduled session. I tie it, tie it all together about programming, about anything, right? Anything. We start life as children and learning to shape and develop the immortal qualities within us. But how exactly are we doing this? And what about the life that comes after this one, regardless of what religion we follow? Because to me, it's clear that life beyond is governed by spiritual laws. And life here is governed by spiritual laws. Once we realize this, there's an understanding that these spiritual laws are not just a part of life. They're at the very heart of it. Many people, both the uninformed and the educated, have drawn a line in the sand between the material world and the spiritual world. That separation has kept the deeper truth of spiritual life from being widely accepted. Whether or not people consciously acknowledge it, the spiritual life within us is always pushing for recognition. We can see this throughout history. And the absolute understanding of immortality and the divine presence, many have yet to fully grasp or make a foundational part of their beliefs or scientific understanding. I know that's changing. The moment we recognize there's more to life than what we see, we also have to recognize that spiritual law is not separate from life. It's the force that drives all of life. That realization pushes me to explore spiritual consciousness and to develop inner strength rather than getting lost in imitating others or decorating my prison with more toys. When you start looking inward and expanding your life, you start to accomplish things that once seemed impossible. As I've grown, the fog of confusion and doubt has lifted. That's revealed a much clearer vision of who and what I may become. I feel the love. I don't mean that in a hippy-dippy, turn on, tune in, drop out, West Coast kind of way. I feel the love and the wisdom. <laughs> I, that way. Uh, I feel the love and the wisdom that flows through nature. It uplifts and strengthens me. And, it, and it's like a spiritual awakening. It connects you with the divine heartbeat of existence. The spiritual life for me is filled with light and love and truth. And it does bring justice and harmony. It permeates every part of your being. It seeps into your sinews physically, mentally, spiritually, neurologically. 
without this strong spiritual foundation, even if you have a perfect physical body, that isn't enough to lead a fulfilling life. We need the principles, the standards, the foundations, and how we address them of spiritual growth to become powerful indiv individuals, to be forces of change in the world, influencing others, not just on a material level, but on a universal spiritual level. You were talking about earlier, it's not going to be celebrities, it's going to be you and me. When I look at YouTube, you see all these mainstream PhDs talking about energy, the soul. What's going on? Absolutely. What's going on? Something is happening. It's not about spending your life waiting for what? For something you're not sure of. For something to suddenly transform your ordinary life into something extraordinary. The truth is, tomorrow will not bring you a miracle unless today's efforts lay the groundwork. You have to start somewhere. In my hypnotherapy, I want to mention exactly what you said and to translate my hypnotherapy. When I have clients, or just before I even have clients, because I've been so passionate about it, I realize, holy cow, this is my path. That's one of them, other than being a medium. I realize people are so afraid to actually go within. They're afraid to go into themselves because they know they have to uncover their shadows. And a lot of their shadows start from childhood. And a lot of people, you came here to experience it all. And 99% of the people that I, I even speak to or clients did not have the best childhood. I don't mean like the best blissful one. Everybody had their things, but other people had very heavy childhood. And they don't want to face that. They try to run away from it and avoid in every way possible from overeating to drugs to overbuying to you name it, it, it it's just a covering up so for them to actually step into and discuss their wounds and say hey that hurt me as a child i was very hurt by my parents by my siblings by my upbringing that's where really is triggered most of my clients and they have hurts and pains from the past of their childhood not always but 99 percent of the time to uncover that it takes a great deal of courage find somebody you can speak to if it's not a hypnotherapist if that's not your path find a therapist one-on-one -on -one you can talk to or on the phone call the hotline and just speak with somebody it takes a great deal of courage to open up because when you do open up, you're going to cry. You're going to feel like crap. People say, oh, this inner work. And I know it's beautiful after the fact. After you've done that, you go, holy cow, I could breathe. I feel amazing. Life is beautiful. I was stuck on that stuff. Meanwhile, I have all this to look forward to in my life. And I was stuck on how mommy and daddy treated me. Meanwhile, I can create my beautiful relationship. But I was stuck on how mommy treated daddy. They go, holy, sh that's not my path. And I realized, wow, I can create anything I want. I'm not stuck in my old beliefs. That's theirs, not mine. People have to realize no matter where you are in your life, you could literally be homeless on the bottom of the barrel or living somewhere sky high, whatever apartment, no matter where you are, those people have their own stuff too. Money doesn't buy everything, right? It's a mental state of knowing wherever you are, you could get to the life that you actually desire, but you have to have reasonable expectations that problems will arise. Even if you have your ideal relationship, maybe you have other issues somewhere else. You have to be realistic with life. Everybody talks about manifesting. You could manifest your ideal life but life comes with problems if you don't have that maybe you have some health issues if you have that maybe you have something else because you didn't come here for utopia i want to state that because when i have my clients and after the session they really feel like a whole brand new person and they come back in, in a sense it's almost like an addiction but it's an addiction for reviving your soul and coming back to the state as you mentioned feeling alive life is amazing and beautiful but a lot of people don't realize that they have to walk through the fire through their soul in darkness and it's all worth it and you're gonna cry you're gonna be angry all these emotions are gonna come up when you have somebody to talk to and you release them go oh my god i could start a new life and that's what i have with clients they are revived resurrected it's so beautiful to see i catch up with them and i love hearing their story and look at me up uplifts me because their good vibes gets me high <laughs> like naturally like hearing their amazing story really tough childhoods they had and that's all privacy i'm not going to mention anything my goodness like my heart goes out to them but when they're healed and they see their life that they could create anything it's just amazing. I don't know what else I could say. It's just amazing to really see them like a brand new human coming out, waking up. That's the reciprocity of energy and the remedial balm that you're able to organize and propel their system to be able to engender. And there's the payback whereby you get uplifted. It's like job done. You've created the ripple effect.
that ripple is not going to go in one direction. It's going to go in many directions. That person may go out there and touch, move and inspire other people. The work you're doing is incredible. So let's delve into that a bit more, because if your life is an evolution, if your life was a metamorphosis, what form did you start in? What stages have you gone through and what are you becoming? My belief is we are light. <laughs> we started off as light. We will continue to be light at core and ever changing. In our light form, we are that rainbow. We have different colors in all our cycles in life. There's a cycle in life where you're green and you're healing. The roots, like you mentioned, the grass is low and it has to sprout up through the pavement. And there's a times where you're passionate about life because everything is aligned and everything's going for you and you're just feeling amazing on top of the world. That's red. Even black. There's times where you're going to have black in your life if you're very low because of whatever reasons we're a rainbow we're literally a rainbow at core we're light i see that when i see the orbs and the spirits they come through me as actual forms but the most common is orbs because sometimes it does scare me to actually see them because i'm doing housework or something and suddenly <laughs> i see somebody walking by i throw my laundry up in the air so it freaks me out so they know they're well aware they come in orbs, different colors. Trust me, I get plenty of orbs that are not so aligned and the heavier, denser ones. I call them the tricksters. I wanted to say one thing about the tricksters. So important to understand. So many people are afraid of, and it's so important to talk about the darker energies. You want to call them the devil, tricksters, darker. They're all necessary. And I know you're like, what do you mean? The thing is, we need them to understand the light. Once you understand the dark, it doesn't scare you. I see them go by blocking. I put my little like a blockage. I asked the angels and guys are gone. I'm not afraid. And they all different ones come and I'm not afraid because when you are afraid, they know that they go, huh, they haven't learned their lesson. We're going to be back. <laughs> the thing is, once you overcome your lessons in life, that monster you saw in the corner, you're like, are you kidding me? That shadow, you see them as a little tiny little puppet. Like really? And this is like overcoming fear in general, fear in life, like public speaking. I had a fear of public speaking. Look at me now, right? I just can't stop talking. When I was younger, I was a mime. I didn't talk, really. They could just leave me in the corner. And I'd be by myself. I was very observant of people. And eventually I broke through that. And it was the fear, right? Telling you to stop being selfish and to give your gifts to the world. <laughs> uh, what do you think about that? That's interesting. That's a really interesting question. What do you think we're born as? When you look at this stuff, the physical, this will rot eventually. It's going to return to the source of its arisings. What we build into our aura, our auric sheath, the history and the information, that's what gets processed, which is light, not physicality. It's the spiritual essence that gets processed. It's a bit like your credit card. The essence is the stripe down the middle, because when you swipe it, it's like the weighing of the heart in ancient Egypt. Does it get approved or does it get declined? Not in the real spiritual sense of being declined. I don't think anybody's declined. But at what level do you enter after this life? It's honoring who you are becoming. And can you amplify that replay of the core that needs to fulfill its journey through us? Why do we need more and more people on the planet? Maybe we need more and more people on the planet because less and less people are doing God's work. If we put more people on the planet, maybe there'll be more people doing the holy work. I don't mean that in a religious sense, in a spiritual sense, to lift the veil, because it's not about worship. It's not about you know gurus. It's about the unchangeable laws of life that no one can alter. It's only true wisdom that can improve the conditions around us. When I go into nature and I look at the expression of all living things if you're just focused on the material you miss out on the governing principles because your eyes are closed to the inner forces that reveal themselves so clearly to those who study nature and natural laws thoughtfully that's where blending of our spirit life happens through every aspect of this universe when we start seeing the divine in all phases of life we lay the foundation for a true educational journey. There's a preparation for us to enter this great university of life where we advance step by step. And not all steps are equivalent. 
it's learning aligning and it becoming part of our basic constitution about the material world but also understanding the living loving principle that resides in everything through a learning and alignment process we grow growth can only happen at the threshold of your comfort zone we grow ready to explore the unseen realms and we continue our search for truth and we develop our soul's treasures throughout infinity there's a harmonious blend of matter and spirit when we achieve some degree of harmony we can begin to appreciate the beauty of life when i go into the, the local community woodlands or I listen to the streams, or I breathe the fragrant air. In the morning, I can hear birdsong. I can feel the unseen connections, the awareness of these universal vibrations that awakens my soul. There's a harmony of spirit that uplifts, that lets me feel the universe's song as it reveals God's power and love. It's in the small things. You focus on the small things. Take the small steps that leads us into a bigger world, that leads us into a greater understanding of life. By finding our personal harmony, align with the natural laws that govern everything. This is not man's explanation. It's the understanding that's created by the greater life beyond us. It isn't about worship for me. It's about living, growing, evolving in this material form that's really being developed as a sacred temple to individualize the spirit if we keep our bodies and our soul clean we can find and cultivate a temple that becomes a pure place to live because god cannot live in a trash can that makes me reflect what you said. You said it so beautifully. That reminds me because me living just life like anybody else, it makes me reflect on the, the beautiful thing you said and translate into my world of just being a real person like anybody else, right? Like you, me, being a mom, dealing with a toddler, living life in between those moments of me doing this for her, her having a meltdown, keeping that harming way, talk sweet to her and to reprimand her and still discipline her. In those moments, you don't think of the divine, but when I have time to myself, I'm able to take a walk, even when she's around and we take a little walk through the forest. And so I was like, oh, wow, this is so beautiful. It's just like your soul's just wrapped in this love. I have those moments when I'm together with her and times where I'm just being real. You don't align with somebody and they said something that irritated you or cut you off, whatever. Real human beings living life and going, okay, I want to be divine. I want to live this. And then yet we have to keep moving through and going, I understand that the divine is always here. So what does harmony mean to me? I'm only going to speak from my experience, harmony, like you mentioned. Harmony mean, meaning, and I give you examples, because back in the day, I didn't understand this. Even though it sounded so beautiful, I didn't get it. And now I get it. Harmony to me means when I meet somebody and I see them struggling, I'm going to go over to them going, do you need some help? I see you struggling with the groceries. Do you need a hand? Yes or no? Helping each other. Or if I'm with a friend and she he calls me and she's desperate because she needs her daughter being washed. I'm like, I'm busy at this time. I can't or I can because I have work or different things. I try to be a reasonable human being where I have my real life, but I try to be compassionate to people. That compassionate is like a boomerang, like you said. It comes back and somebody else sees that and they give that back to somebody else. And that's where we evolve. It's not these big things. It's the little moments. It's a collection of little moments all throughout your life of just being a, a kind human being really that's it and trust me there's times where i'm almost losing it with my daughter who has a meltdown over the silliest things where i just oh my god i had enough just go to your room i just need to get my peace because there's times where just you're only human we're only human like where we have all these things thrown at us and i believe in the divine but we're not so divine are we when there's times like, oh, I should maybe said it that way to her, or maybe I should have said it differently. And we think about it after the fact, because I'm only human, even though I see orbs, angels, spirits, I see this divine matrix. They go, oh, you see the divine matrix? You must be holy. No, I'm a real human being. Jesus was. He was a real human being who was supernatural, like we all are at core. We're all supernatural. That's all I have to say. <laughs> You're right. Life's a moment by moment affair. And you have to deal with the horizontal, which speaks, and the vertical that listens. 
The horizontal is your maintenance life, doing the laundry. When your child is having a meltdown and yes, you're not going to be sitting there being all divine and oh, wow, this is just a beautiful soul. Things are irritating and absolutely you've got the daily grind of life, but that doesn't stop you from training yourself to be present, train yourself to use the fraction of time you have on earth to learn the laws of life, to be in harmony, even if you are irritated. It's not the awareness of the irritation that's irritated. It's the irritation that you're irritated by, but the awareness of it is not irritated. When you learn to live and understand the laws of life, you can be in harmony with the universe. You have to go into the rough and tumble of life, whether it's doing the laundry or dealing with bills. I have to face that every single day. But at the same time, I've got to run a business. I'm always cognizant of something else. As an example, if I'm tired as a man, I try to wing it and my standards drop because men do that. I recognize it. I integrate the fact, oh, okay, I need to raise my standards or get some sleep rather than slogging through this tired, psychological, lethargic state. That's the cognition of it. There's an opportunity to do that. For me, when I step into the unseen, I'm living in eternal life today because I always have in the back of my mind that after this transition, whatever form that takes, I only had a glimpse of it, I'll continue living in an eternal life. That's what I've come to experience viscerally. It's the recognition that the opportunities for growth and unfoldment are now in every minute of the day. And I'm not good at it, but it's an attempt. That's all it can be, is an attempt. I've got my foibles. I've got my fears. There goes you. There goes another person. They have their fears. They have their desires. They have their hopes. We all have those things. But as I grow and I live and I become more in tune with the laws of nature, I become stronger. It's a refinement process. There's an indestructible foundation of truth. For me, there's nothing greater than truth. No religious belief is loftier than truth. When your soul gets that awakening, that spark, it uncovers truth. It allows me to walk in its light and live by its clarity. This is how I build my life. No, God, Jesus, Buddha doesn't force or compel me to live in any specific way or belief. I'm guided by the constructive forces of life. And how I use those forces depends on my understanding of them and my willingness to follow the universal laws that shapes those outcomes. As I live each day, we all receive in some form or fashion what we do by nightfall. When we put our head on that pillow, we can look at the day. We can do that backward cascade, which is a practice that I do. I look through the day and evaluate. I don't attach blame or judgment to it. I can live by a constructive law and build a stronger life. If you attribute blame or judgment, you're misusing those forces because you're only going to experience the benefits or penalties based on your understanding or misunderstanding of these principles of natural law. It's returning to the foundational truth of life. Whatever that might be for you, I think it's different for everybody. But for me, it's the recognition of the divine in all things, the harmonization with natural laws. I look at my olive tree. What do I see? I see two thirds of it. The one third's under the ground. In this two thirds, one third principle, which is a natural law, look at my finger. I can only be in two thirds of it at one time. One, two, three. Look at my arm. One, two, three. I can only move two thirds of it. Conscious, semi-conscious, subconscious. I can only be in conscious and semi-conscious. When I sleep, I'm in subconscious and semi-conscious. So there's a two third, one third principle at play. But if you don't recognize or understand that, you miss out on the beauty of things. You miss out on the beauty of natural laws. You don't open your soul to receive those blessings the higher wisdom from those things, but also from those who've gone before us, from the Jesus of the Christ, from Buddha, all of these different people. Yogananda. <laughs> Yogananda, that's Yogananda. Yep. Yeah, yeah. We've drifted through life according to our own ideals. 
we float on the, the surface of events without direction, why haven't we recognized truth? Why haven't we listened to the voices calling for transformation, like the one crying in the wilderness, urging repentance and preparation for truth? Because the wheel of progress turns slowly. It's cyclical. It's a matter of evolution. And the first four words of evolution is love, love of growth. You know, the most important thing that I realize is that humans have to be kinder to themselves mm -hmm. and thus to each other. We should have more love, be more love, do more love. But they're not even kind to themselves. Speaking as a hypnotherapist through experience, even for myself, there's times where I'm so hard on myself. I didn't finish this project. I should have done more. And I get angry at myself. We are our own best friends. And we don't treat ourselves like our best friends. A lot of times we're very hard on ourselves. I shouldn't have said that. I didn't do enough. Enough of what? Because other people put the pressure on you. Society puts the pressure on you to be a man or a woman or a mom or father or whatever job, coworker, boss, you name it, or spouses or partners they put the pressure on you or they don't and you put it on yourself parents you name it relatives in conclusion what i believe is we should be kinder to ourselves guilt i do i'm only human i should have said that i should have done it different I, I didn't do enough work you were lazy i'm like you weren't lazy you you had a headache for three hours you took medication you're going to be hard on yourself for that why did you have a headache in the first place that's the thing you really have to go listen treat yourself as you would treat a best friend when you treat yourself with more kindness and love then you treat others with more love and then there's that wave it really starts at the simplest core this is what i've realized in my life when i reflect on my day i don't reflect so much and i should i'm guilty of this but ever since i was a mom when i was a free person no children you you're know, still free candles <laughs> but when you have a child, it's different because you don't really plan the time for yourself. And she's sleeping. Thank God, let me just get a glass of wine or just relax or do something, de-stress. Things to meditate, connect to the divine more. And I don't. And that doesn't affect my connection to the universe. It doesn't affect me seeing spirits and ghosts, but it affects how I feel about myself, thus the world. It's just remembering that at the end of the day, be kind to yourself. And take the time to think of what you're grateful for. Like everybody says that's a broken record. And got back to this saying, hey, what are you grateful for? Because it's so easy. Every single night we think of this didn't go right. This went to crap. We really think of all the negatives, don't we? At, the, at night, we don't go, oh my gosh, maybe if something amazing happened, like you win the lotto or something, yeah, great, you can think of that. But for the most part, humans actually are wired to go to the negative of their situation in their day. Not so much the positive, right? So we have to rewire our brain to actually think of the po positives. I recommend to your listeners at the end of the day, just sit back and go, what are you grateful for today? Do not think of the bad unless you have to resolve a situation. But if you don't, leave it be and go, how can I do this better? Don't blame yourself. You did what you knew from where you are. People have a lot of regrets in life and they go, I should have, could have, would have. You did the best you could from what you know now. Imagine you 20 years ago, the younger you, would you make the same decisions now? No, because you grew, you're wiser. Don't regret anything in your life, even though you look back on it going, I shouldn't have worn that, said that, done that, dated this person, went here, did that, spent all this money on that. Don't regret that. You did that from where you only knew. Don't regret and go, I shouldn't have invested in this business. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have saw this person. Why waste all this time on this friend? Do not do that to yourself. You needed to go through that to bring into the now, to realize next time I see this, I know how to avoid that or maybe do a different way. Peter, I do have to go in a little bit because I heard my da daughter knocking. I'm so sorry. You'll have to come back so we can talk about hypnosis and mediumship. Would you like to do that? I would love to. Absolutely. I'll send you the recording calendar link. I'd really like to talk about mediumship and the quantum code. Channeling or quantum code. Oh, absolutely. We haven't delved into any of that in depth. But we touched on it, so that's good. But I would it, love to come back. Absolutely. Well, that'd be great. What did mom say? Oh, mom. Do you remember? I don't really remember, but all I know is this is a really quick message. She gave me so much love and I felt like a release. I can't explain it other than just like words. I wish you could have felt that, that warmth and embrace. Mm. And second of all is whatever's happened to you health-wise, she understand that it's better. It's improved. Whatever you have going on, you had a situation. I don't remember at all what you said. There's something health-wise and it's just improved, whatever the case is. It's not what it was. It's not the most ideal, but it's better. And she's aware 
she just gives you love and she was just here and it, it, that's it there's nothing else that needed to be said ever since I gave you that message about your dad I feel like he either visited you more in dreams you feel him more you feel more connected to him there's some kind of moreness of this connection you have since then and he's just overjoyed getting chills up and down my spine saying that it's not that he wished he had that connection with you as he was living but he knew that after he transitioned you would have still had that connection regardless so there's no regret about him now it had to happen the way it had to happen so you would have the connection he's aware that you have this mm. connection even through these other spheres of dimensions and it's beautiful as corny as it sounds you're exactly where you need to be okay and that's for everybody and i'll go in detail as to why that even is is because we live in the infinite multiverse all your decisions are alive. Even the ones you've made, you're actually living them out in other spheres that you're not aware. That's why you still have dreams of maybe other situations that don't exist in your mind or your reality anymore, but they actually still exist in the ethers. If you ever had a dream of your childhood or another person you met or a job you've had, that actually still exists. Even for me, I had a dream that I'm a nurse because I was down that path. It was so vivid. It was crazy. It was so real. I was a nurse at a hospital my age now. This is what I really speak about in depth in my uh, teachings is that there's no wrong path because you're inspired. There's inspiration for a reason. Like I'll, I'll give you a thing. Like I'm actually posting these videos. I think are going to do really well. They're really going to excel on social media. I've actually recorded because I was inspired to do it. You have to go, okay, what am I inspired to do? I posted on, on my, one of my other channels, the quantum world. I have two channels. One is called uh, the confessions of a quantum channeler. It actually has a lot more views than mind healing guide because people are just more interested in this weird quantum world that I talk about all this stuff. It's going pretty well. Actually I just posted two months ago and I got like hundreds of views already. Lovely to see you. Thank you, Peter, so much. Take care. Joanna. Bye. Bye.